<clears throat> the stimulants of erythropoiesis, like human recombinant EPO, um, has been rumored for a number of years. Uh, whether the administration of human recombinant EPO, in fact, improves the performance of horses in racing uh, is still open to question. And the reason that it's, I think it's open to question is that the, the horse has a, what's called a contractile spleen. And the spleen stores l very large numbers of red blood cells. And when the bell goes off in the starting gate, the spleen contracts and releases those stored red blood cells into the blood. And so the, the horse is considered a natural blood doper. The release of the red blood cells into the horse's blood increases the oxygen carrying capacity of the blood. It's a normal evolutionary adaptation of the horse uh, to, being able, to being able to run away from potential predators. And the same thing happens at the start of the race. The carry, oxygen carrying capacity of the horse is increased as a result of the contraction of its spleen releasing red blood cells into its bloodstream. That's what human athletes are attempting to accomplish by the administration of human recombinant EPO. It in, the administration of the EPO increases the number of red blood cells uh, that are circulating in a human athlete's body. <clears throat> So for a horse with an intact spleen, it's really difficult to determine experimentally whether administration of EPO produces an effect that adds to that normal response of the horse to its spleen contracting. We know that administration of EPO, human recombinant EPO to horses does increase the number of red blood cells. Uh, studies were done back in the 1990s in which the spleens were removed from horses so that they didn't have that ability to store their red blood cells. And in those horses, the administration of human recombinant EPO increased the number of red blood cells, just as you would expect. Um, but we still don't know whether that has any positive or negative effect on performance. What we do know is that because human recombinant EPO is human-based, the protein structure is slightly different from that that the horse has. Uh, the amino acids are a little bit different from what they are in a horse. And as a consequence, some horses react to human recombinant EPO as if it were a foreign protein, and they develop antibodies to it. Uh, in some cases, those antibodies will also include the horse's own natural EPO, and the interaction between the antibody and the EPO results in the destruction of the EPO. For those horses that develop this um, immune response to human recombinant EPO that then interacts with the horse's own EPO. Those horses lose their ability to produce new red blood cells because they no longer have EPO. Uh, those horses become uh, severely anemic uh, and many of them will die. So there, there are risks associated with administration of human recombinant EPO to horses even with, without addressing the question of whether performance is enhanced. And so there is a reason based on horse welfare to test samples for the presence of human recombinant EPO. Uh, those methods are available. All the U.S. Uh, racing laboratories have the ability to detect administration of various human recombinant EPOs to horses. Um, the detection periods are often very short, and therefore uh, the use of out-of-competition testing uh, has been introduced. And one of its uh, goals is to detect the use of 
substances like human recombinant EPO, uh, which produce their effects. The effects last for weeks or months, um, but the substance that caused that effect is no longer present on race day. Um, because of the delay between administration of human recombinant EPO and the appearance of new red blood cells in the blood, uh, a week or more after administration of the EPO, <clears throat> it doesn't make sense to ever administer EPO near race day. It makes sense to administer it a week or more before race time. And so out of competition testing is the only way uh, to detect administration of those kinds of substances.